Now then, Radio 2 got behind uh, Jack Savaretti uh, a good seven years ago now, and he's become a huge favourite on this station's playlist. Uh, Jack's third album comes out next month. Uh, it's already got fantastic reviews. It's called Written in Scars, and he performed his first single off it, Home, which he's going to be doing here in a minute, um, in front of a home crowd at his beloved Genoa, uh, the team that he's followed since he was, what, five? Five, five years old. Was five the first years time old. That's been amazing. You can describe that in a second, but let's just get the Italian connection clear. But, but what's, the, what's the background? That's my dad. My father's Italian and my mom English. So where were you brought up? I was born in London. Yeah. Yeah, but I kind of was brought up a little bit all over the shop. Okay. So <laughs> it's and, a confusing. And presumably, I mean, if you support Genoa, which is in the, that top north, east, west, yeah, west, west yeah. corner of, of Italy, um, that's because the family's still there? Yeah, my, my grandparents were from there. My cousins are all still there. My parents have sort of migrated since then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely have my roots there. And it's a place that I didn't really grow up in. I, I mean, I was baptized around there and kind of brought up <laughs> spiritually, <laughs> if you want to say. Yeah, yeah. Although not really. Um, but it's a place that I've only just recently rediscovered. Really? Yeah. It's, well, I know it reasonably well. We've been to Portofino a few times. Which, which is exactly where I kind of, which, where I grew up. My, my whole family, my grandparents during the war, hid out on the mountains. Just well, they were in the resistance, Portofino. were they? Yeah, my, my grandfather was the head of the partisans of that actual region. Wow. So he was, quite a, he was quite a big deal. So growing up, it was always very nice going back there because we were always welcomed with, you know, I was the yeah. grandson of a war hero in that region, so it's a nice thing. So who would your grandfather and his cronies have been directly fighting, the the, the Italian troops, um, loyal to Mussolini, or the Germans when they came and occupied? Well, they kind of, at that, the stage where it became important, there was always a bit of an uprising towards fascism, but it was more directed towards the Germans because they started working with the Allies. Yeah. They were basically clearing the way for the Allies to then come north. Wow, and did, and did you know your grandfather? Yeah, I did. I was very close to my... I have the same name as my grandfather, so... Really? I was named after him, to put it that way, so yeah, um, I, we were very close. And was he... I mean, my grandfather had experiences in the First World War, but he never spoke about them, I mean, or, or very rarely. Did your grandfather talk to you about what it was like fighting in the mountains? Not at all. I mean, I, I, no. he passed, unfortunately, when I was pretty young. I was around six, five or six years old. Okay. So, <laughs> terrible war stories never really came no. out. And actually, I really didn't know much about his history when, when he was alive. It was only afterwards, and certain things happened after his passing. He got a street named after him near Genoa, mm -hmm. and I was lucky enough to be of age to go there and meet some of his, you know, his comrades, so to speak. Yeah. And it was amazing to hear some of the stories, and he was a pretty, pretty special guy. Yeah, it sounds it. Well, tell me about this, um, this performance in front of the home crowd at Genoa, which is the team that you've, you've followed well since you knew your granddad, really, when he was still alive. Um, how, did that, how, how did that come about? What was it like to actually, you know, be like a Liverpool you know, saying playing in front of the cop, you know? Yeah, well, it's pretty terrifying, and a lot of people <laughs> advised me against it, because <laughs> football in Italy is pretty religious. It's, it's something very, mm. very close to the heart, and you don't mess around with it. So a lot of people are saying, you're crazy, because if you play and if you lose, you'll never be able to walk the streets of that city <laughs> again. Because you cursed it. Yeah, literally yeah, yeah. people will cross the street when you're walking there. It's quite superstitious <laughs> in that respect. So I was a bit scared, but the song is called Home, even though it has nothing to do with football in itself. <laughs> I kind of, a lot of people were asking me, you know, when I wanted to make the video, well, where's home to you? And I really don't know how to answer that question no. on many levels. But there is this one little place that when I was five years old, I walked into, and every time I walk back into that place, you I feel like I'm stadium, five years maybe. old. And that's the stadium, yeah. Right. So it kind of had a nice little personal attachment for me, even though it has nothing to do with the lyrics <laughs> of the song. And I also wanted to capture that the feeling that I'm speaking about in this song, which well, is a feeling of love and waiting and this kind of ang anxious Feel, want and need for to feel something passionate. Just that want to feel something. And um, how did it go down when you'd finished? Well, it went down really well because Good. when we'd finished, everybody was like, okay, well done. You know, mm. there was nothing much about it. It was a, very emotional for us, but I don't think anybody else really cared because <laughs> the game hadn't started. But Genoa beat Juventus on the 94th minute. We scored the winning goal and the stadium exploded and people were literally queuing up to touch us after the game. <laughs> <laughs> we became the sort of, you know, the chosen ones. So I love it. It was great. I love it when people take big risks and they come off. Yeah, it was That's a good fantastic. Game. Okay, well, you've, you've described the song, so let, let's hear it. <laughs> Out of sight, out of mind In the darkness there's no light Day will go and now I know What it means to stay and fight I won't give up, I won't give in I'll give it everything But this feeling is real and I wait for my love to come home come home I wait for my 
an interesting voice I mean really interesting because you seem able to switch from a clear tone to that kind of husky crackle is is that just coming in and out Sunday ne- morning <laughs> <laughs> that'll do it to you I, I meant uh, really I meant it as a compliment I mean is, it, is, is that is that that occasional huskiness which is really you know a strong feature of your voice is that something you, you're able to control and, and sometimes because sometimes you were singing just a very pure note and other times you have that crackle underneath it which is great um, is that something you can consciously control or does it just sort of happen I think I've learned to control it. Right. Oh, I'm trying to learn to control it, like <laughs> most things in my life. <laughs> and I think that's all it is. It's a reflection of that. Yeah. Um, that's. I think everybody's got a few sides to them, and I think that mm. comes out when people sing. You yeah, can yeah. hear the two, at, at least the two sides of people's personalities. Just a quick reference back to, to the game that, that you sang that. Did you sing it in Italian, or did you sing it in English? No, no, I sang it in English, and it was actually nice, because funny you said Liverpool before, because mm. our, our fans are actually cousins with the Liverpool fans, oh, yeah, and okay. we also sing You'll Never Walk Alone. Right. Um, so it was also very emotional, because before the game, as a sort of tribute to them for letting us do this video, I sang that song with the crowd, and when 45,000 people <laughs> sing that song with you, I mean, yeah, that was yeah. pretty emotional too, so. You started out as a poet, didn't you? You, you didn't a big see- word. I mean, I like to write poetry. <laughs> I have a very short attention span, so poetry was something that I was able to dig out of the woodworks to sort of, I could use. There there's not many rules to poetry, mm. at least when you start out, there's not many rules to poetry. But, but you were a performance poet, weren't you? I mean, you were, you were reading. Um, I, well, I, I kind of, it was the first thing I was told I was okay at put it that way academically it was the first time that somebody gave me a pat on the back and said hey this mm. this is this is okay mm. which i wasn't used to so i i found a tremendous amount of um release comfort yeah, yeah release and comfort in it because it was something i could do and the music side of it only came later i mean we had a guitar hanging around the house all the time and my mom kind of said you know why don't you try putting that to music and i was just a kid mm. scribbling down some ideas and then all my friends had started playing music um, I didn't yet because I was very into football, funny <laughs> enough. Um, but then that kind of went out the window, and I picked up a guitar, and songwriting came in. And are you are you a fast songwriter? I mean, how long, for example, did it take you to to write that one you just performed? Well, I actually wrote that with Seb and Pedro, who are here today. Oh, guys, yeah, they're okay. in the band. Yeah, um, so we wrote that together. I think we were that was a pretty quick one. It was one of the first songs we actually all wrote together. Mm. Um, so it managed to have that nice, fresh spontaneity yeah, yeah. to it. Like same day writing, you know, start in the morning and finish by lunchtime. Yeah, I always yeah. try to 
I would definitely always try to do that. When we write together, we always seem to manage to do that. Mm. I think it's good to have the discipline of three friends sitting in a room telling each other to shut up and get on with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's how we did that one. Okay, now you're going to do a cover for the, for, for the next song. I mean, do, do you do many covers? Is that in your repertoire? Um, well, the reason I started writing was because I could never learn other people's songs. Um, and I still kind of am that way. I sort of learn the first bit of it, and then mm. it gets too complicated, so I decide to write something <laughs> over what I can play. You can manage it. Yeah. My writing has always come out of tremendous laziness. Um, but, yeah, we've just started to do covers, and it's quite fun. It's, I like to choose covers that people wouldn't necessarily expect us to do. And also, I like to also play songs that maybe don't get heard enough or don't get interpreted in a way that probably mm. they should be sometimes. I'm trying to, just before you do it, I'm just trying to work out your accent. I mean, have you, have you picked, because you have got a, a definite Italian sort of lilt to it. Is, is, has that come from, from your dad? I mean, did you speak Italian at home when you were growing up? Yeah, I mean, already when I was a kid, before I spoke a word of Italian, I used to get told going to school in England that I had an accent um, yeah. and I'd never spoken any other language. So I think I always imitated, you know, I think a son always imitates his dad for the good, yeah. the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> and his accent is definitely something that I think you're right. Off. Uh, my dad was, a, was an ex-public school boy. He was sent away during the war. A horrible public school, but anyway, that's where he went. And so he spoke, sort of, kind of received English like this. Yeah. You know, received pronunciation. And when I was growing up in Romford in Essex, I spoke like that when I was in a playground. I spoke with a proper, you know, like Essex yeah. accent. Like, I still talk like that, you know, yeah. when I'm down that way. Uh, but when I was at home, because dad was very cross to me if I dropped my H's or, you know, missed my T's, I spoke sort of like this so i have a kind of a double voice but you've 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 got a hybrid voice but mine is kind of exactly i have the same thing that happens to me it depends who i'm talking to oh uh, yeah if i'm talking to you know if i'm talking to somebody english i become better i guess <laughs> <laughs> no you become yeah, yeah. i become a better person <laughs> well that goes without saying obviously Jack. Yeah. <laughs> but if i'm with my dad for a few days i come back talking like super mario so it, it kind of depends on it depends on my circumstances <laughs> yeah. and what does what your dad do what's his profession now nothing he okay. he's, like me laziness is a is, is in our genetics <laughs> well, so, well, not in that, much. In that case you better do the next song before uh, you get too bored <laughs> over to you this is yeah this is a song called love really hurts without you Some other guy who gives you the eye You don't give him nothing to me You painted a smile and you dress all the while to excite me But don't you know you're turning me on I know that it's wrong But I can't help the pain inside me, baby Love really hurts without you Love really hurts without you Like your queen of the action You're using every trick in my book The way that you look You're really something to see You're cheating your lies You impress any guy that you fancy But don't you know I'm out of my mind So give me a sign Help me ease the pain inside me, baby Love really hurts without you really hurts through and through And it's breaking my heart So what can I do now, baby? Love really hurts without you Love really hurts through and through And it's breaking my heart So what can I do without you? Yeah, without you, girl Oh, oh, oh baby Love really hurts 
thought we were going to get a live fade there before <laughs> coming down. Do you know, I had to fight really hard not to join in the chorus there. Really, it's such a good sing-along song. Well, that was great, Jack. Thanks so much. So, Thank so, so when's the album coming out again? Uh, the album is coming out in February, I think, like, 14th, 15th, something around okay. Valentine's Day. The 19th, I'm being told. 19th, oh, the 19th. Of the the 9th, lady behind the glass. The 9th of February. Frantic we got it. We got it. The 9th right. of February. The 9th of February. <laughs> All right. And it's called Written in Scars. Written in Scars. And Home was the, was the, the title track, as it were, coming yeah. or the, the lead track coming yeah. off it. Well, very quick question. We were talking about how people kind of go a bit weird when they arrive in airports. What do you like travelling on planes and stuff? Are you, you cool? Uh, uh, that's where you say that. That's like my reoccurring dream is always something to do with airplanes. Really? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a love and hate relationship. I love that they get me out of there and I love that they bring me home. So <laughs> I'm always a little bit excited and a little bit relieved every time I get to an airport. All righty. Well, look, fly safely. And Thank you very much. Great to see you and great band as well. I really Cheers. enjoyed that. Thank you very much. All right. It's, um,